Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about expectations on my answers, so let's get into it. So the question in question was more of an observation really, it was posted on a video I made called Should I become a manager, the manager of a lousy team? And the short version of that video is basically that I dissect the wording of that question should I become a manager of a lousy team and basically say that based on the way that you expressed your that that person who asked that question expressed themselves uh, I would say no because no decent manager would say something like that in my opinion uh, because it really in the, in the wording sort of indicates that you haven't actually done your homework. Uh, if, some, if a team is lousy, there's always a reason behind that. That's basically what I argue. And if you're not perceptive enough to figure out that part and figure out the like where the pain points are for the team, then there is no way for you to save that team. And, based, uh, and then uh, a person's posted... Uh, I was expecting you to give a pros and cons and explore different scenarios uh, when it comes to dealing with a team that is bad, which you did, but I didn't expect you to also declare what the word choice says about the person posting the question. It makes sense, but I didn't even think about that at first. Very insightful. Thank you. Uh, so the reason why I wanted to touch on this is a little bit because someone else wrote that Frederick is the Gordon Ramsay of programming and I want to make that very clear that I do not view myself in that way and I hope that if that was unclear to anybody when somebody asks me a, such a basic question such as should I become the manager of a lousy team it's basically at the same level of a question as asking how do I, how do I become a great software developer and what I like to say is that I tailor the answer uh, to the quality of the question and of course I mean I inject my own experiences and so forth but that's kind of the whole thing that I'm doing I'm just giving you what I've seen and done and so forth uh, and so basically if you ask a question that is this loose and that this unrefined that's unfortunately the best answer I'm going to be able to give you because otherwise I'm going to have to speculate quite heftily and uh, an example would be as the subscriber was mentioning if I were to give you pros and cons in uh, about managing a lousy team it's practically impossible for me to do that in an, in, in an efficient way without like literally cr mapping out all kinds of possible scenarios. I can give you the scenarios that I have seen myself and that's why I wanted to do this basically to give you a, one or two examples of how I in my personal career has de have dealt with quote unquote a lousy team and how I fixed it and just give you that but the reason why I gave the answer that I give, gave in that video is basically because the person who asked the question would not have been able to figure out or get anything meaningful from the thing that I'm, I can tell you now. Because it's like, it's literally like asking me, as I said, how do I become a great software developer? The only person who would ask me such a question is not ready for the real answer, usually. Like it's uh, it's like uh, having a toddler asking me how to um, how to save money. I can give them a basic like toy answer that's gonna give get them get the ball rolling. But giving like relaying a such such a complex thing in 15 minutes or like 10 minutes or whatever I usually do uh, when the question itself kind of indicates that that person isn't hasn't really put a lot of thought into it. I mean, it might just be that they were lazy with the question. That's okay. Uh, that's it. Does, it's pointless. But let's do that. Let's talk about pros and cons and uh, about a few scenarios. So, just in general, I would say that uh, being a manager for a team like that, I can't really give an answer to that because I'm not a manager. I've never been a manager. I have been a team lead on more than a few occasions a tech lead and an architect and a few of these sorts of things and uh, uh, you might feel that I'm a little bit nitpicky here now but I like to say that there's a difference uh, and the difference is that I lead teams I don't manage them 
the difference in that is that a manager on average is not actually a software developer. It's not in necessarily in a person who actually has any knowledge of how the team is structured. And that's why I say that such a person can, asking this question should not take on a team that is bad because they will never be able to fix it. The team will just remain bad until you switch out the team and hopefully quote, hopefully, if you, we cross our fingers and pray to Linus Torvalds, next time you hire a new team you're just going to get the magic combination of people that kind of works or you're going to overhaul your recruitment process and make something sustainable. The reason why I can with, with confidence say that I usually don't have a problem taking on a quote-unquote lousy team is because I've done it several times and it usually turns out the same way and the reason why it turns out the same way is because I know as a software developer with quite a few years of experience now or well, I wouldn't say that I'm a senior but I have enough experience to know what needs to be done in order for the team to work effectively and there is usually a few tools to at your disposal when it comes to leading a team now the first and foremost thing to understand when you're leading a team and not just managing them is that you need to figure out who are the players what roles do they have within the team and there is no way a manager can do that because in order for you to do this, you basically have to see how they work and how they do their job and like what coding practices do they follow? Who is the, who is the uh, over-engineer? Who is the engine? Who is the bitter senior? Who is the insecure junior? Who is the person who has, has just magically gotten this job but doesn't know fuck all about coding? Who, like, who is the visionary? Like there are all these type of archetypes, archetypes of uh, developers and I can't go through all of them there are so many combinations of people and it comes down to that exact thing one part is raw experience you yourself in order to solve this problem or to fix a, a broken team ne you need to have fairly strong emotional intelligence and you have to have the tech skills to back it up as well because in a few scenarios you actually literally have to do again I've done this guys I have literally been assigned a team or been uh, joined a team where they were accustomed to not doing anything apart from the bare minimum they could they shipped things in two weeks that i that when i was pair programming with said developer took a day that was normal to them it was completely normal to ignore unit testing, completely normal to not do code reviews to help out your coworkers, to just kind of sit on your ass for days on end without any worry whatsoever. And the only, the way you dealt with it was when the stakeholders came and complained or were unhappy with that the system was always broken and everything took a million years. You just said that that's unfortunately the way it worked. And that's the problem. That's the that's the problem with having the wrong developers because you as the stakeholder or the manager or whoever you are you don't know you're you're talking to a wizard and the wizard can just tell you that the magic is hard and it takes time and you have nothing to go on that's why you need a that's why you actually need to be able to trust and the trust is the important part uh, at least one senior software developer who can kind of come in or like a tech lead or something like that and come in and fix that and you know what the best part was when i started introducing because that's always the hard part when you're dealing with a lousy team that in, where in this scenario it's actually due to the problem is due to the fact that the people who are working in that team are actually not actually they're not motivated to do a good job they were primar primarily consultants now what do you imagine i had to do well, the first thing I have to do is to set up some basic structures about testing, code of conduct uh, in, in the workplace, uh, basic, basic things like that. What do you think happened? Well, immediately I get complaints, a lot of kickback, pu pushback, and now they're unhappy because now all of a sudden they have to do stuff, etc., etc. And I uh, immediately my manager calls me up like a week into the whole thing and says, Frederick, you have complaints from everybody in the team what's going on and I said well, it's very simple uh, I'm trying to make this into a productive team the problem is that nobody wants it to be a productive team so 
my manager says, okay, well, you, but it's like the office politics are not going in your favor. You're going to have to fix it some other way. And I said, all right, that's not a problem. I just have to do the work for everybody. And that's what I did. So that's one scenario where you literally, if you're going to deal with the lead of the team, you can only lead by example. You basically have to sit down and do everybody's job for them until higher management unties your hands so that you can fix it. Another scenario was I went into a team where they had one single very poisonous senior developer who never knowledge shared, kept everything to himself, uh, didn't give fuck all about any of the coworkers. That was an easy fix. Um, I use what I call the troll principle. The troll principle is that uh, if in a king in a magical kingdom, what usually uh, you know there there are these fairy tales where you the, there's a troll on a bridge. Now the king hires the troll to take care of the bridge, and in return of maintaining the bridge, the troll can take out the toll. Now the problem is that the troll thinks that he very quickly starts believing that the troll is almighty because he controls the bridge and people need the bridge. And so he starts bossing people around, behaving like an asshole. Now how do you fix that? Because the troll knows how to fix the bridge and the king needs the bridge. But what, what would a clever king do in order to solve that problem? Well he sends in a builder who talks to the troll and the troll, of course, is going to completely ignore the builder. And then the builder learns how the bridge is maintained. And when the builder knows how the bridge is maintained, you can kill the troll. Because the troll fails to understand that his value comes from the fact that he knows things that are difficult. The well, you know how to take care of the bridge but if you have somebody else who's actually more cooperative than the troll who knows the same thing you don't need the troll anymore so you can kill it or in this case fire that person and that's exactly what happened so they sent me in I learned all the things that the senior knew and when I uh, and then my manager said okay uh, do you know all the things and I go yep yeah, I can pretty much run the team now okay fired immediately and then the team kind of stabilized immediately. Then there are, and this is like, guys, this is like two examples of tons of other things, like everything from having like unproductive POs or people with uh, unorganized uh, delivery processes, etc., etc. So, uh, giving a pros and cons thing of having like a, uh, a taking on a quote unquote lousy team really comes down to are you able to deal with this situation and are you willing like do you want to look at this as a learning opportunity because it's going to be rough trust me it's going to be rough and you are going to risk a lot by taking on quote unquote the a lousy team or the wrong team so if you're just in it for the career thing and not personal growth and like overcoming a challenge in general do not take responsibility for a bad team because as I said in the first example you can actually get lynched you might be the only person in the entire team who's re actually even showing up to work and all it takes is for the wrong manager your uh, your manager uh, to be in, uh, to be told that you are incompetent by the people that are actually causing the problem and you're gone do you want to risk that it's up to you. So what I want you to take away from this is that in general taking on a quote-unquote lousy team should not be done by somebody who doesn't have fairly extensive experience within software development and has a very very good level of emotional intelligence who is able to basically you should be a fairly senior profile to make that work. If you are a junior software developer at managing your first team or you're a manager who is not really technical, you don't really know how to structure things and so forth, don't try to do it uh, because you're simply not, you're simply going to face off uh, against something that you might not be able to fix. And guys, there are teams in IT companies who are so poisonous that it's practically impossible to get anything done or to even introduce new people into the group because they literally just freeze everybody out and cause a lot of issues. If you want to fix that sort of problem, you have to be the right person and the company needs to have the uh, have an understanding of that some teams that are underperforming are underperforming because they need someone to help 
guide them and, and teach them how to work in a better way and some teams needs to basically get someone in there who can evaluate each individual and fire the people who are causing the problem. Have a great day.